I could buy two broken PS5s, not be able to fix them, and that profit's gone, just like that. I've only gone and done exactly that. I've bought two faulty PlayStation 5 consoles from the same seller in an attempt to fix them and make a profit. This is Sally's Spectacular Spreadsheet and I'm currently in the profit of £315.85p. For both of those PlayStation 5 consoles, I've spent a combined total of £350, aka I really need to fix them. If I can't fix either of them, I'm gonna be in trouble. Now, both of these consoles on the listing are customer returns and apparently untested. Is there a world potentially that these work Yes, absolutely. And whilst that would be amazing, I also want some good content. So here we look at our first PlayStation 5. I believe they are both disc edition consoles, relatively scratched on the faceplate here, where they've obviously gone to put in the uh, the charger for the controller. How's the back of the console looking? It seems to be okay. Slightly scared because again, I have no idea what the faults are with these. And this was definitely a risky purchase. Do we get power with this console? Let's test that out first. I think I heard some sort of crackle. I'm just gonna see if it powers on. Do we get power? We do. We get a blue light and it's staying on, it's not shutting off. Does it stay on continuously? Do we get a disc? No, no disc, unfortunately. It's gone to a white light. I'll plug in a HDMI cable. Oh, it's got, okay, so it's gone back to a blue light. So maybe it wasn't shut down correctly. Okay, now we're at white light. Is that gonna go back to blue or is that gonna stay at white? Let me check my monitor. I have a display. I'm gonna just quickly set up the PlayStation 5 because it's asking me to set it up. So I've gone to set the PlayStation up and this is what I'm greeted with. Now this is the same USB-C cable that I use all the time for this controller on PlayStation 5s to sync it or whatever. We'll just go through the setup process. If I take it out and put it back in, the controller has the orange light to indicate that it's taking some sort of charge. Then I get nothing. If I go ahead and push the button on the controller, I get the blue light, but nothing happens on the setup screen at all. I've tried a couple of different things. I've tried a different USB-C cable. I've tried different ports on the console, different USB-A ports. The controller actually works in safe mode. So when it's plugged in in safe mode, it works fine. The first thing I actually done was updated it via ethernet and it was like a, a gig download. So it was definitely something that needed to be updated. And I'm always finding myself back at that screen and not being able to proceed further. It's not frozen on the screen because you can see that the image is still moving, but it's just not letting me get through to the next part of the setup. I'm gonna take the console apart and have a look on the inside to see exactly what's going on, if there's anything obvious that might be jumping out at me, and maybe take a few measurements. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for everything DIY. Create a custom PCB and have your quote in seconds. The ordering process is made super simple with so many different customizable features for your design. They also specialize in CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. Why not even go ahead and share your project in the project section of the website? You can't beat PCBWay's prices and express delivery times. Head over to the link in the description for a $5 welcome bonus. Also worth mentioning that when I went to reinitialize the PS5 with the update file provided uh, from PlayStation, it didn't recognize the USB. It was saying you need to put a USB stick in. I've used this on multiple occasions. So it's almost like there's power from the USB ports, but there's no data. That's what it seems like. First interesting sight is that this console has has had a repair by the looks of it because it has avoided warranty sticker that not only just went where it usually would but further than where it should be. So we might have had a case of a repair that's just not lasted or gone wrong. Whilst I'm taking this apart, I'm kind of thinking in my head, I'm like, they, they've stated on the eBay listing that it was customer returns, but they've had repairs done to it. So how, how does that work? How do you return a console as a customer return, but it's had a repair, you know? Unless I'm being stupid. Okay, what I will say is that I've been on a journey trying to look at as to why the USB ports aren't working on this PS5. Shout out to my Discord because I had a great conversation with both Roy and Lee Uber Micro Repairs about what might be happening and what's going on. I'm gonna try and explain it to you the best I can without sounding like an absolute moron. Let's switch over to the microscope cam. Just up here, you've got both of the USB-A ports which are on the main motherboard and if you follow the traces by the looks of it, they just feed straight into the APU that we have. My first point of call was to check the filters which are between the port and the supposedly the APU and I'm getting continuity at every single point I can as well as the same on this one here. Then I also checked in diode mode both this side of the cap and this side. Uh, compared to a working board, I was getting the exact same readings. I was then looking at these connections here and I believe these actually link to the USB ports, but I could be wrong. They're on the same side as the ports themselves, but it might not be the same circuit. I just, I was clutching at straws at this point. So again, I measured all of the components on this compared to a known working board. This is actually the known working board, not the one that I'm working on today. And I was getting pretty much 
exactly the same on the working board compared to the faulty board. So this circuit seemed to be absolutely fine. Lee also then said about this chip, which is TUSB44. After looking at the data sheet provided by Roy, this is actually a USB-C controller IC. So this is specifically for the USB-C port, but regardless, I checked what I could in diode mode anyway, but everything seemed to be exactly the same as the known working one. So then I then get to thinking again, how is the USB ports working in safe mode, but not when I power up the console and it boots? Like that that just doesn't make any sense to me. So again, in the Discord, I'll leave the link to my Discord in the description, by the way. There was a little bit of back and forth as to just some basic troubleshooting tips. And I suddenly thought, why don't I just disconnect the front the front panel board, this one here, which has the ribbon cable of the USB-A port at the front. Thinking that in a usual scenario, if one USB port fails, usually the rest of them go down. Then I came across this. This is the front USB ribbon connector, and we have some bent pins. I'm just flattening them out to see if I put it in, if it works. I mean, yeah, they've they've stayed down, so it might actually be okay. I'll put it in again, and I'm just taking it out. How are we looking? Okay, maybe, maybe they are now fine. Just a case of flattening them down. Pause for a second. I actually then had to stop filming because I came down with COVID, which I didn't even think was a thing anymore if I'm being honest. It's the first time I had it and I'm still still recovering. I think that recording was about 10 days ago. So I'm gonna try and start here from where I left off. Obviously my hair's grown a little bit and, and stuff. So I'm gonna update you now with my findings. All right, so I'll take you over to phone cam. The PlayStation is on, okay? So I fully reassembled it again and it's been reassembled ever since that day. Here we have the screen. Here I have the USB and the PS5 controller. And I'm gonna plug it in. And what happens with the controller itself? We get the orange light, but it doesn't, the orange light doesn't turn off straight away anymore. So the orange light is now on, right? Just plugged in the USB at the back as well, the USB cable at the back of the console, and same thing, yeah? Just orange light. If I push the button, we can see I can go through the setup, and I have gone through the setup once and reset the console just to test this again, and I'm in it and it's fine. I just wanna say, everything seems to be working. This is a uh, this is the first Spider-Man on PS4, but as you can see, it's the disc, so the disc drive is working, it's installing the game. That's pretty cool, it gives you an option to upgrade it for, for five pound to the remaster, that's pretty cool. But what I will say is that before I set this up, this is last Saturday, or sorry, two Saturdays ago when I was recording, I was playing Astro's Playroom for a good 30 minutes or so and didn't have any issues whatsoever. It connects to Wi-Fi, disc drive works, Everything seems to be okay. So for the time being, I actually have no choice other than to just call it fixed. Again, I played for it a little bit. I will have to give it some more stress testing, reset it a bunch of times, maybe even just test data for the USBs to make sure that they're okay. But the console works. Two Saturdays ago, I did, when I when I had it apart, when I pulled out the cable, I replaced the liquid metal on the APU as well. So I know that that is pretty fresh. So I think with this one, we may have just got extremely lucky, I think. So I can call that a fix. Let's move on to PlayStation 5, number two. To be fair to the seller, they have put so much bubble wrap and protected these consoles, it's actually really, really nice to see. This one is uh, <laughs> is a little bit dirty, I would say. There's a lot of specks of dust on the top. We've got some um, like plastic here. There's some like neon paint. I don't know if you can see that. Turn this down, you might be able to see some neon paint. So we're about to have a PS5 party. And yeah, just general condition of this isn't as great as what the, uh, what the other one was. As like a replacement console, this would be perfect. Now, can I see anything obvious with this one? Yes, I can. Wow, we might actually go two for two today on the PS5s. This one just has what looks like a dodgy HDMI port. So let's see if it actually gets power. So that's the main thing. If we get power, it goes to white light and we just have no display. It should just be a nice, simple HDMI swap, we hope. Do we get power? We do, it powers on. You can see that we have the blue light here. Does that go to a white light is the question. We still have a pulsing blue light at the moment, so no white light just yet. It's been about, I'd say 20 seconds. There we go. Okay, so we have a white light. You can't see it unless I tilt it. There we go, so we can see the white light now. So it does boot to something. So hopefully we just have a bad HDMI port on this one. Wow. I'm looking forward to see if it's been open before and what the condition of the console is like on the inside. Apologies if I sound a little bit strange. My, my nose is still pretty bunged up. Let's see if we get a disc. No disc. Let's turn it off. I'm still a bit like weirded out how these are customer returns. You can't warranty a HDMI port like that. Someone has clearly like eaten it. This one hasn't been opened and it's actually one of the newer boards. The reason I know that is because usually in the older revisions you would have the cable from disk drive going to the motherboard um, and you'd be able to see it be a long sticker here. But on the newer revisions, it's just you have the fan bit here and the cable actually goes underneath the, uh, the top chassis. Plus, like I said, not been opened. Nice. Okay, board's down to bare basics and, uh, and it's actually in pretty good condition. I'm just cleaning up the liquid metal. All right, heading over to the scope. 
How bad is it? Yeah, look at that. That's how bad the HDMI port is. So clearly, it needs to be replaced. All these pins seem to be pretty strong though, to be fair. Get the port off though, pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna hang it just here. Come in with our Atten at a temperature of 480 degrees Celsius and an airflow speed of 99%. Let's get this port swapped out. super happy with this port and I'm happy with the soldering iron choice etc etc the only thing that I'm a little bit not again concerned because this port isn't going anywhere the strength and integrity of the port is really really good you can see that from the ground holes on this side but this side we've just got this back one here the one at the front is also fine it's just this back one I'm struggling to just get solder to push through. You can see that we have solder in the hole. It's not like the hole is empty. It's just struggling to get up on this leg. This one here is the specific joint for it. And I've applied both hot air and the soldering iron from this side, but I don't want to apply too much hot air that the port actually just falls out because I've had that happen to me before. We've got three really, really good strong ones. And this one is semi-strong because it goes halfway up. I'm happy with how it is. But as for the actual pins, yeah, lovely job. I was gonna leave it. I was just gonna put hot air on the board. Um, and when I tested the pins, every single one of them was solid, but I think it's more so for OCD purposes, I need to ensure, and just a good job overall, that there is solder overlapping the pins just to make sure we have a solid connection. I'm gonna put the board back together and give this a test. I've tried giving it a clean as best I can. This stuff at the top, I can't get off. Like, I don't know what it is. Uh, I've tried IPA, I've tried stronger cleaning stuff, and it, it's just stained. But the rest of the console looks okay. All right, time to test. Got our cables plugged in, it beeps. Good, we get the blue light. We need that to turn to a white light. And we put it on HDMI one but that should auto lock to HDMI 2 and give us a picture. Should do. It might not do it the first time around. Let's try again. Do we get anything this time? Does it, say H it does say HDMI 2. Do we get an image? Yes, okay, there we go. Wiggle test as well. It seems to be absolutely fine, perfect. Why is it asking me to initialize? If this was broken and the HDMI port was as bad as what it was, then surely you wouldn't have been able to reset it. So how does that work? I don't understand. Unless somebody reset it and then messed up the HDMI port, I don't know. I'm gonna give it some tests. All right, well, I've just gone through setup and I've disabled HDCP, which then allows me to put it on the Elgato game capture. And uh, and it seems to be all good. I had to do a system update. So it took it to the latest version, I believe. And it says you have the latest version of the system software, which is good because the disk drive clearly then works. I also, again, have the PS4 version of Spider-Man. So the disk drive does definitely work. And I think that's another fixed PlayStation 5, which was just a HDMI port. Consequently, I don't think it's actually gonna be a long video, but nonetheless, pretty profitable today. Again, I'll caveat and say I need to test the other PS5 a little bit more. I'm gonna play Spider-Man. I'm gonna upgrade the five pound for the PS5 version and just see what happens. Make sure it's not cutting out in the game, etc. Let's head on over to Sally's Spectacular Spreadsheet to check out our profit for today's video. Our cost for today's video was again 350 pounds. The cost for the parts for the first console was nothing. For the second console, a HDMI port, uh, I think they're valued at around about, I'm gonna say like two pound now, to be honest. I've just checked on eBay and consoles at the moment, PS5 disc edition on their own, are going from anywhere between around about 325 to 375 pounds. We'll say 350 pounds each, in which case we have a sell price of 700 pounds, leaving us with a total profit in today's video 
of £299.70. Pretty much 300 quid. Like, that is just unbelievable. That's the best profit I think I've had in an episode by far. High risk, high reward. If we take £299.70, put it in our box down here, we're now on a total profit of £615.55. You don't always get that lucky on eBay. And what's quote unquote easy for me as a HDMI port replacement might be ridiculously tough for somebody else. As always, thank you so much for watching. Apologies there wasn't a video last week. Again, I was just super ill. If you know this channel, you know how much it hurts me to miss a video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. I'll leave the last episode of this series up here. This was episode number 25. I don't know how many I'm going to go. Have a great rest of your weekend and I will see you in the next one. Peace.